Today, I'll be discussing the Shaman, designed by Sal Glesser, founder of the company, one of Spyderco's toughest built knives ever. This one comes standard with an S30V blade, G10 scales, it comes with a compression lock, stamped clip, the stamped clip also goes in a four position for left or right hand carry. To get into some of the design, the, uh, the ergos were really paid attention to on this. Um, you want to be able to, we wanted to be able to get it so you could choke all the way up on the knife. A larger hand or a larger palm would fit it nicely. But if you wanted to get back on, on the handle a little bit, give yourself some more length, it also fits the hand very well for that. Um, when you do hold it, the back here was nicely curved so that it would fit the palm of your hand. You can kind of see how it fits in that palm of the hand. So if you are doing push cutting, it's going to give you some good strength right there in the palm. When you do do your pull cutting too, as well as your, your, your ergos here are going to grab the knife. It's got a little bit of hook back there and it's not going to slip out of that hand. It comes with a smooth top all the way across. That way, it, uh, if you want to get your thumb on top and get some more leverage with your thumb, depending on where you're holding it, you can get your finger on top and get down on that tip. You can really just hold it and bear with it. And so with this smooth top all the way across, you're going to be able to hold it in a variety of positions. We really paid attention to this jimping. We wanted it to be to clean, straight, parallel. It grips your thumb nicely. Also, the jimping right here on your forefinger choil is going to give you some nice grip for your finger. It's generous in size so that it can fit a larger forefinger in there. Um, just about any hand is going to fit in there just fine, and that guard's going to keep you from sliding up on it. The G10 itself has a large radius here. The radius um, goes all the way around the profile of the knife. The radius is also comes up and it flattens out here on the top so that when you are going in and out of the pocket, when you are holding it, it's got a thinner profile but also gives you some nice round handle in the, in, in the hand. When we ground it or machined it, we also paid attention to this uh, finish line or this grind line was about as seamless as we could be. We didn't want a secondary grind line that went around this large radius. So transitioning from that radius to the flat and back to the radius was uh, difficult in the machining process but we were able to achieve what we were trying to do with the knife. It comes with uh, large bolts. These bolts are screwed together um, with T8s. We wanted the larger bolted head so that when this thing is pulling together it's got a lot of rigidity than the knife. It also has a larger pivot um, head here so that it gives it good rigidity and good side-to-side -side strength. The clip itself um, has a pad that's spread out. Uh, the screws are spread out typically more than a lot of our knives. And then it has a large lanyard hole so you're going to be able to tie a variety of lanyards to it um, of whatever you, you're choosing. And then it does get around the pivot here. And so that when you are bearing on this clip, um, it's really highly unlikely for this, this back end to, to go anywhere on you. Um, with the compression lock itself, we went with this stop pin. The stop pin is not screwed in. It's kind of a stepped pin, and it's a, it's a large pin on the inside. And with the compression lock, it's got a, a 50 thou piece of metal in here that's got a, a large piece in there. You'll see it a little bit clearer when it's opened up. And that's going to give you a lot of strength. This compression lock and the way we, we did the engineering on this, it's... Uh, it's one of our stronger locks that we've produced, um, and it's going to give you a lot of strength. It's really not meant to go anywhere during use. Um, also, the compression lock is very safe. When you are holding it, it's very unlikely, extremely unlikely, that it's ever going to close on you. And so between the strength, the placement of the lock itself, um, and being able to get in there and, and unlock it, this is going to be one of the, the safer users out there today, especially for that hard use. It's got a backspacer in here. That backspacer is also going to give it some rigidity. It's going to keep the knife from moving back and forth very far. But it also it has a fairly open construction so that if you do need to get it cleaned, you need to get out in there with the, uh, to clean it out for whatever debris may get in there, um, it's opened up. And then it has a skeletonized liners on the inside. That's going to give you the strength and the rigidity and reduce the weight. Um, the grind uh, is going to be special on this one. It's going to start up, and, uh, and to demonstrate it real quick, I'm going to set the knife down and do a quick little drawing. So on this knife, um, we're going to pay attention to this grind, and this grind is going to come up, and it's going to swoop kind of through here. Um, and this is going to give you a lot thicker stock 
uh, up in this area here. And so with the grind line coming up and sweeping through, rather than coming up and going all the way through, it's going to give you a little bit more pri priability in that stock. Also, with this grind, it doesn't have a choil here. Um, there are a lot of companies that like to put a choil here. Um, oftentimes, we don't put a choil there because it's going to catch something. We don't want the knife catching. If you're a rodeo clown trying to cut a rope, the last thing you need is that choil catching something. Also, we're very good at our sharpening, too. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that grind line all the way back and get that grind line down here and then get that edge started right out at the back. So if you do need to get that back to that edge for an emergency and do some cutting, that's gonna, that edge is going to go all the way back. It's going to find home with that guard, and it's going to perform quite well. And then with the grind line itself, um, or the grind itself, this bevel is going to get thicker from here, or it's going to start a little thinner, and then it's going to get thicker as you get towards the tip. I mean, I'll put a mic to that and give you some, some, um, some measurements for that. But out here at the tip, it's going to be a little bit stronger um, so that you can drive that tip in and use it for, um, for some harder chores. And so the grind line on the Shaman um, is very special. And what we were able to achieve in, in both its bevel and its performance here for its, its everyday slice cutting and then the tip strength for what you're going to get at the tip. Um, and that's your basic design. Um, having that said, let's uh, get some specs and, and jump into it. The weight on it, let's see, I have this set up. Uh, 1.463 grams. Um, as a comparison, I'm also going to throw in a chief. 1.12.3, so it's going to be a little bit heavier than the Chief. Um, then a Native, just to keep comparison sakes going. This is also going to go to 8, 4.8. And then the Little Native, uh, 68.1. Um, and then if you want to look, there's a, a nice spread of what the, the family would look like. Uh, for some size comparisons. All beautiful knives, that nice uh, humpless top so that you can can get on the knife. Um, for blade length, I believe it's just over three and a half. Yep, just over three and a half uh, inches in blade length. Um, and then overall length, you're looking at just over eight inches for overall length. Now, for blade thickness, as I recall, it's 145. Point one four four five. Then a half thou. Um, now here, right behind the edge, try to get a, a measurement here. It's a caliper, a mic might work a little bit better, but I'm getting, Let's see, behind the edge, 0 0.03 here at the back. You're going to find it a little bit thicker than some of our knives um, that are smaller in size, but it's going to give you a nice stock right there. And then as you go all the way at the tip here, behind the edge, let's see if I can get a good grip on that. We're looking at 0 0.037. 0 0.04 and so you can see you're gaining you're gaining a few thou all the way up also with this edge angle this edge angle we shoot for 17 degrees we're typically with when within one edge degree angle um, and you can see even as the blade gets thicker we're able to keep that nice consistent edge also we really pay attention to not pl plunging over plunging at the back of this edge oftentimes you can over sharpen particularly when you don't have a choil and you get kind of a reverse s curve in there and so this gets a nice flat edge into the the curve of the tip and drawn all the way out to a nice crisp tip and so just the edge be bevels the gr um, the steel itself the edge itself even the heat treats um, on this blade it is going to perform um, and, and we're very proud of what we're able to achieve in that. 
In the closed position, you're going to see it's got a nice profile. Even here, there's a little bit of a, a corner, but it's not going to snag you very much at all. Same here. It's going to fit in and out of the pocket nice and smooth. And then with that flat surface here and the flat surface here, the, the pants pocket or whatever you're clipping it to is going to go right on in, and it's going to be nice and secure and, and thin in the pocket, but still being able to pull it out and have, have some heft in the hand. The handle thickness is 0.52, so it's a little bit thicker than a lot of spider codes you might be accustomed to because we like that, that palm to be filled with the shaman. Um, the lanyard hole, 0.22. Um, yeah, there's some basic, basic spec to dimensions. All right, um, so now we're gonna get into the, the breakdown of the knife. With this one, I'm going to be using a T6, a T8, and a T10. Starting with the T6, I'll be taking off the clip. Um, we're going to try to use some, some larger headed screws on, on the clip here. Oh, I went right out with the T8. With the T6, we're going to try to use those larger headed screws. Um, with the screws, we also want to get a a good amount of threads in there. We're not looking for a half a thread lockup. And then like I said earlier, it's going to be nice and spread out. Um, the clip's a great material. It's not going to easily bend on you. It's going to have some great spring to hold in your pocket. Then I'm going to use the T8 to start to unscrew the backspacer screws here. Um, and I'll start with just the backside first. And uh, put those in a little pocket. Hopefully they don't roll away. Um, for the pivot, make sure you grab your T10. If you grab your T8, it is going to feel a little snug in there, but that's a, an easy way to strip out the knife. So this is going to use a T10 at the pivot. Start to break that lock tight in the pivot a little bit. Um, this knife has a D on the inside on the main pivot to keep the, the pivot from turning, but it also uses two male screws on both sides. And so while the knife is still together, I'm going to break those two screws because they've been Loctited in. Um, but then I'll continue to take apart the back side. Um, and you can start to see that uh, the, skies, the size comparison on these screws, you know, we wanted a nice larger bolt for that pivot. That pivot should be plenty strong enough to take just about any, any type of use you're looking for. Um, same with the th threads on those screws, those clip screws are, are, are getting a good grab. So now I'll start taking off the back side. Um, you'll see the skeletonized liner. It's nice and clean. It's tumbled, uh, nice and flat in its profile. Um, the, the liner here is wrapping the, the stop pin. Um, that's going to give it some real nice strength. Start to pop off that liner. Um, when you look into the way this liner fits in there, it's absolutely snug. It's damn near a perfect fit and finish. Um, and then that steel comes up and it exposes right over that G10 and right over that stop pin to give it that added strength. As I popped it off, you could see the, the uh, phosphor bronze washer came out. We're going towards phosphor bronze on our knives. The phosphor bronze gives it, gives it a little bit more natural lubricant. Um, also, it's, uh, it's got a larger diameter um, so that it covers more space. It's going to give you a, a little bit better of an action than some of the other knives out there. Um, you'll see date codes and batch numbers. Um, all the knives we do these days are tracked on the inside in case we need to go back and look at it. Um, point out the blade next. Um, you can see the phosphor bronze on both sides. Um, this has got a metal backspacer. The, this, the uh, lock bar um, rides nicely against the stop pin. The stop pin has a nice diameter to it. Um, we're going at uh, 0 0.18, one, it's a 186, 187 pin, 187 right there. Um, and then for the pivot, if I remember, yep, 193, no, that's not right, uh, 250. Yeah, so that's got a nice quarter inch pivot in there. Um, that should be able to hold plenty of, the, plenty of weight and strength. Um, now this washer's not gonna just come out because it's held in there by the stop pin. You can see some dry, lo dry Loctite coming out. Um, and that's why I backed it out a little bit here. So now I'll continue to take this backside pivot out. Um, 
I'll pull out the the uh, pin here. If you look closely, you're going to see that there's a D on the inside. It's all stepped. Um, and then on this, this liner here, you're going to see a D there. That's going to keep it from spinning around. Um, but uh, there's your, your pivot. Um, now I'll take off the back spacer. Do I have the right? Nope, I didn't. Take off that back spacer. Again, it's got a good amount of threads, nice headed screws on there, not sliding away. Um, there's your metal back spacer. And this pin should just come out. It's just kind of pressed fit in there. Again, like the other liner, you're going to see, you know, almost perfect fit and finish. Uh, the, the steel is going to be exposed up here through the G10. It's going to give you a lot of metal over the stop. Um, you have a little ball bearing in there. That's going to be your, your detent for keeping it closed. And then we can pop it out. And uh, three screws there, two there. There is your shaman taken apart. Beautiful. Um, now I'm going to start to put it back together. Uh, oh, quickly looking at it too, you'll see a little extra pocket in here. That's so that the, the lock can get extra clearance for the ball bearing and able to unlock. All skeletonized, all clean. Uh, the G10 too is a, a nice high quality G10. Um, you're going to see there's not voids and, and, and little frills of, of material coming out. It, it's fairly solid all the way through and clean. Um, so not all G10s are created equal. This is a very high quality clean G10. So I'm going to start with the back side on the assembly. And I'll put in this liner first. Um, here I'm going to start to put in the back spacer first. It's going to help me hold the knife together. I think this was the original screw I used. So these are all this, these backspacer screws are the same. So if they do get mixed up, it's not a problem. Um, oh, I need some Loctite. Um, I want to keep the knife together. This is a medium. I'm not using a hard. Oh. Little bits coming out there. I'm going to have to get some. I'm going to use a paper clip to put in the G10 or the Loctite. Um, you can do it a variety of ways. But yeah, I'll put a drop in with a paper 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 clip here. And there's already some dry Loctite in there, so I'm trying to break some of that out a little bit too. Um, the other technique I'll use is I'll grab the screw. Oh. Grab the screw and put the head in there and Get a little bit of Loctite there on the head. And it'll start to spread throughout the part as you screw it together. So I get the first one. Get the second one. That's going to keep the backspacer, will keep the liner in place, start to hold everything together. Um, now this has a D on it, and so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to lay out my phosphor bronze washer. Then I'm going to line up my D so that it doesn't go anywhere. Um, at this point, I like to typically add a little drop of oil. Um, these knives are, have moving parts, and they like a little bit of oil. Um, now I'll drop in the blade. I'm also going to drop in the backspace or the stop pin while I'm here. Oh. Rotated it a little quick. In fact, I'm going to. So I have to find the D again, make sure it lines up, drop down the blade. Um, next, I'm going to start to put on the blade or the liner. Um, I'm, I'm going to add it with the scale when I put it on, but I want to put it on and see how everything's lining up. And then I want to do it in the closed position. 
so that the lock's not trying to engage. Um, so now I'll drop this liner in, and this is going to give it a little backing to help push that spring into place. Um, and now the knife's pretty much being held together by my hands. Um, now you can go in and you can use your paper clip and, and drop some Loctite in there. I'm just going to grab some screws, all kind of holding it down. If you let go, it's going to pop up. There's a little bit of spring on that lock, but it's not too bad. Not too bad to overcome. And so I'll get some Loctite on my backspacer screw again. There's one screw. Uh, got some Loctite on it. There's the second one. Now the knife's pretty much held together, though you're, you're pretty loose here at the pivot. So now, yeah, n neither side is being held in. But you can see, because of the way the pivot was structured, the blade's not going anywhere. Now I'm pretty much just adding the pivots back in. If I'm going to make sure I have Loctite on it, I really like to make sure I have Loctite on the pivot. That's the one that's getting work the most with the blade opening and closing. So there's one. Oh, I forgot a washer. I can't believe I did that. Not too big of a problem, though. Oh, This will be quick. You don't want to assemble it and have extra parts. Not a good sign. How I forgot that. Oh. So, here it goes. Let's, let's see how quickly this can go. Line up my D. Put my blade in. Oh, while I have it apart too. There's an extra shiny part here. That's for the ball bearing to ride on. It's going to give you good action for the, the motion. Also, there's a little cutout here that receives the ball bearing. Um, so as you unlock it, um, gee, I got distracted. But as you unlock it, the ball will ride off this ramp into this little slot and then across the smooth surface. It's going to give you much better action for your, your closing of the knife. So it already has some oil on it. I'm happy with the amount of oil. Make sure to put in my phosphor bronze washer. And I'm going to put another little drop of oil. And then we'll put the backspacer and backside on. Now you think I even re uh, screwed it a little backwards that way. I think I assembled it the other way. But as you can see, it's still fine. These already have Loctite on them, and the Loctite hasn't really dried and set. So I probably don't need to add more Loctite, but I don't think it's going to hurt. All right. Now we're back where we started. The knife, like I said earlier, it doesn't have the screws in there, but because the pivot has a D, um, it's still almost functional. Now we're going to grab our T10. Make sure I have my Loctite on there again. Start screwing that pivot in. I'm just going to go kind of snug. I'm not going to over crank it. Then I'm going to do the other side. Get that Loctite on there. Again, I'll just go kind of snug. I'm not trying to crank it down tight. And at this point, oh, the blade moves a little bit, but it's still snug. And so, do you want to just check it? It's feeling solid though. Right now it's already got a solid lock. It's already got a good detent to keep it closed. Uh, that's really important. But I do tend to back these out, you know, a little bit, maybe a tenth of a turn, just very lightly. You can see here. Just so now let's see, I'll go snug. And then I might back it out just a little bit of a hair. Oh, and you can feel the action just opens right up. Um, you don't want to go too far, though, or you're going to add play. And when we're assembling these in factories, there's guys that just do thousands of these, so they have that down. Um, and then I will put the clip back on. 
Uh, so on a knife, this is typically always the front side. This is always the back side, typically. Um, and as many people know, I also oftentimes like tip down. And I want to see how well it holds in the tip down. Oh, geez. Also, if you're going to use Loctite, like your pivot, you want to make sure you have some on your clip screws. It's one of the most important. It's probably the most common part that, that people lose on these knives is their clips or their clip screws. Now, I haven't really tightened them down all the way. Um, the two are already, they're snug, but they're not really too tight. All right, now go around and do this a little tighter. Uh, also with this, getting all those threads in there, um, you really don't want that longer screw with all those threads to interfere with the blade or the phosphor bronze washer. And you can see it, it's just a beautiful fit and finish. Uh, those, those clip screws just don't go too far. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the Shaman. I enjoy it very much. Um, and thank you for spending the time with us. Oh, as a quick tease, if you will, there are more coming. Um, we have an S90V version that we make right now in a Sprint. Uh, we have black versions. We have exclusives that we're doing. Uh, this is a, a Micarta Crewwear version, and there's more to come. And so if, if, you're, if you do like the Shaman or a certain, certain flavor, uh, there are more to come. And thanks so much for uh, taking the time with me.